Hey, welcome back to the Psalm series. Today we're gonna be reading Psalm 23 in the Passion Translation called The Good Shepherd. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. You become my delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and your love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. That was Psalm 23 in the Passion Translation. You know, it's funny for me, I've read Psalm 23 in, uh, I think the ESV and maybe NIV, maybe Amplified. I, I love so many different versions of the Bible, but when I read the Psalms and the Passion Translation, I always just get a renewed sense of God's love and true, true heart for us. And when I look at Psalm 23, it's just that refreshment that no matter what is going on, seeking God and having God at the center of our lives, and seeking him first, um, we are always safeguarded when we do that. Because it can look like we've just been doing the same old thing and oh man, you know, been going in circles and I've been doing this and it doesn't seem like, you know, spiritually I'm not seeing any change, I'm not. But I wanna encourage you if you've been feeling like this, because I think all of us have at some point that this scripture actually speaks to that. So I do want to read some of the notes to these verses because I think that we can read it and think it means just one thing, but when it's translated, um, there are several different meanings for certain words. So I think sometimes it's helpful just to go in and read some of these verses that you could, you could be a little bit too familiar with and have kind of brushed off like, yeah, 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 I've heard this Psalm before, but hold on for a second. Let's, let's understand really what this is talking about. So here's what I mean by this. In verse one, it says, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. If you go into the notes, it says, the word most commonly used for shepherd is taken from the root word ra'ah, which is also the Hebrew word for best friend. The translation includes both meanings. They've just included both meanings in there. So just, you know, so that's why you can look at this and go, well, this says this, but then what about the ESV? It just says my shepherd. and both would be correct. In verse two, we see um, that it says, he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. And I, listen, this right here, I love this. It says, the note says, the Greek word for love is agape, which is a merging of two words and two concepts. Ago means to lead like a shepherd, and peo is a verb that means to rest. Love is our shepherd leading us to the place of true rest in his heart. Oh, I mean, that's just, mm. And then the other half of that is the Hebrew word manahu. I'm probably gonna butcher these words. <laughs> the Hebrew word menuha means the waters of a resting place, quiet brook of bliss. I mean, that's just, I love that. And I love reading the notes because it actually gives you a fuller understanding of what David is talking about. Now, verse three, listen, that's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. The note says, he causes my life or soul to return. So often life drains out of us through our many activities, but David found that God restores our well being by pursuing what pleases God and resting in Him. So God restores our well being by pursuing what pleases God and resting in Him. 
There really is no lack when we pursue God. There is no lack when we put all of our stuff down, all of the things that could just be, uh, whether it's distractions, whether we have things in our life that that we are holding before God, um, whether whether we just feel like God's not around, like whatever it is that we're dealing with, we could be going through loss, we could be going through really hard, difficult times. Um, I know a lot of people right now are affected by financial crisis. I think everybody has felt it. I'm just with what's going on. I mean, you could list off so many different things and reasons to not seek God, but it says right here in the scripture that as we seek God, actually we are restored. We are refreshed. That's just not a small thing. And I think sometimes we forget that. I mean, obviously as human beings, we are prone to forgetting. And so that's why it is so important to live in remembrance of these things. Oh, right, right, right. And it is important to read God's word every day because, um, and listen, it's not to say you can't miss a day, right? But seeking God every day, your spirit's renewed. It's actually a safeguard because we know that life can just get absolutely crazy. So that's why I love reading these notes because it's such a good reminder. It's not, it's not just reading that verse and going, okay, yes, absolutely, he revives me, but it's actually going in and seeing, this is actually how this works. This is how God works. This is how we're revived and refreshed. So I hope that that brings clarity for you. I love hearing it and I love reading it and learning it because for me, I, hey, listen, sometimes you need that reminder, hey, God's got this. The other half of that note is actually pertaining to the part of verse three that says, and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. It says, or circular paths of righteousness. It is a common trait for sheep on the hillsides of Israel to circle their way up higher. They eventually form a path that keeps leading them higher. This is what David is referring to here. Each step we take following our shepherd will lead us higher, even though it may seem we are going in circles. I mean, have you ever felt like, man, I've been like, I've just been seeking you. I've been doing this. I give, serve, worship, pray, you know, I'm, I'm here, God, I'm doing this. What's on your heart, God? What are you? And sometimes it can feel like, man, I just feel like, you know, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing everything I can. I'm waiting. I'm, you know, but it can feel like, oh, it's just, I don't know. Am I stagnant? Am I like, you know, what's going on? Because sometimes I think circumstances will lie to us and tell us that. But the truth is that no, we are continuing up the mountain to do that. Let's talk about verse four for a second. So verse four, as a reminder, it says, Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. Listen, this to me is also a revelation of God the Father, okay? And I love that it talks about fear is not gonna conquer me. Because the truth is sometimes we can think that if we feel fear or we sense fear, that we're doing something wrong. And the truth is fear is always gonna try and come in. Like you often, especially when you're doing something that when you're living your life for God, uh, if you're in a circumstance or, or whatever it is, fear loves to come in and try and shut us down in whatever way it can. And so the truth is often we are going to sense fear or feel fear, but it doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong. Now we do need to, the moment that we sense it, cast it out. And that's the truth. And so how do we not get conquered by fear? Well, we confront it in the spirit immediately and we don't give into it. So it may want to try and hang out. It may want, okay, but it's not going to drive the car. Does that make sense? Like it's not gonna control me. It's not going to run this. So nope, absolutely not. Cast you out in the name of Jesus, nope. So, and it doesn't mean that emotionally you might feel it or you might sense it. 
you're not doing anything wrong as long as it is not has not conquered you it's not controlling you it's not running the show so i hope that that clears it up for anybody who might be wondering okay well i've been told that you can't feel fear and you should just that's just not even i'm doing something wrong it's like look i mean we are human okay <laughs> so the enemy is always going to want want to try and get to us and fear that's a really huge thing especially for women especially for women you're not doing anything wrong that bad boy wants to come in and try to always uh you know tell you that oh you gotta be careful of this or, oh no what if this happens i'm just absolutely not just no no, we're not even gonna get it, give into it. What are your thoughts on Psalm 23? What is something that jumped out in your spirit that you feel you want to share? I would love to hear from you. Go ahead and drop your revelation in the comments and share either your favorite part of Psalm 23 or maybe what your takeaway is after you've read this. You know, my prayer for today is that our hearts are open to God and that we can actually receive Him as God the Father and receive the comfort that all of us are seeking. And I really believe that as we seek God and as we lay down the things that we think are more important in order to hear what he's saying, in order to understand what steps we need to take in our lives, I pray that we are refreshed, that we receive healing, that we continually seek him for his will and what he needs us to do for him. You know, yeah, I pray that for all of us because it's something that we continually need uh, in Jesus' name. I invite you to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, of course here, um, all under A Touch of Flourish. Also, feel free to check out the blog, atouchofflourish.com. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit subscribe. Of course, we're reading the Psalms, we're doing this. This is all a part of the Psalm series, uh, but we're also gonna be sharing other videos. I invite you to join in and connect within this community. I will see you next time to read Psalm 24 in the Passion Translation. Hope you guys have a great week. Take care.